Nell Forder, reigning ACC Coach of the Year, and her team appear in stifling defensive performances to begin the year. Only 29% shooting allowed in wins over Central Michigan and Kennesaw State on Thursday. Yeah, this is going to be a big game for both of these teams, both starting the season out 2-0, and, oh, and Belmont has been incredible, winning two big road games, and this is their third starting the season. They're getting after it. Five seconds in, we have our first jump ball tie-up. And I think both of these teams know how important this game is right now. It looks like a re-jump, possibly. Well, because neither team established possession. Oh, that is so true. How do you determine the arrow? <laughs> And now the tap cleanly controlled by the Yellow Jackets. So this is going to be an opportunity for Georgia Tech to try and figure this out. They win the jump ball, try and get something early in their offensive sets against this Belmont defense. And starting now, Belmont is playing a nice matchup zone. Hermosa double teamed, almost had a pride loose. Ray Hermosa nearly had a double double versus Kennesaw State. Shot clock at five. Off the give and go. It's launched in. Doesn't get the bounce. The rebound cleared by Madison Bartley. As we take a look at the Bruins starters, and certainly Wells, the headliner, but not the only star. Jamie Lynn Kenny, preseason All OVC. Madison Bartley, career high in the season opener versus Chattanooga, and she puts the Bruins on the board. And that was a nice move by Bartley. She made a nice move straight to the basket and was able to get the basketball high up on the on the rim and was able to get the first two points to start this game out for Belmont. The pull up by Love off the marker, most of the rebound. And Georgia Tech, they're going to have to really be dominant. Crash the boards, you see early, because Belmont is going to clog the lane. They know that Georgia Tech is a great offensive rebounding team. It showed against KSU the other night, and they don't want that to happen again. Love then slicing through. It swung around to Kubai with the shot clock at two. No good, but another offensive rebound. And that's something Fallon that Georgia Tech does so well crashing the glass on the offensive end. Oh, they do, and they've been doing that the last few seasons. This is a rebounding team. They know they get their points from crashing the boards hard. That's a mistake by Hermosa right there with the turnover. And yeah, Belmont really sinking in, making life difficult on the Tech bigs as they get the steal. The entry to Bartley around Hermosa, and it rolls off. And like you said, Bartley is not afraid. She's coming into this game a sophomore good height really capitalizing on how she started the season and really taking it to Armosa on that last possession. McQueen off the mark from three. Bartley clears another board. Anderson Bartley, the sophomore from Kettering, Ohio, career high 21 versus Chattanooga in the opener. She has been plagued by foul trouble the first two games as well. Sneaks by Love, and it's 4-0 Belmont. And that was a great decision by Wells. She saw that she had Love Gardner, a mismatch, even though Love is capable of guarding guards in multiple positions, but Destiny Wells, very quick, first step, gets to the basket for the layup. Wells, OVC Freshman of the Year last year, preseason OVC Player of the Year to begin this season. Kitty ball hawking Lawton. Another late shot clock jumper by the Jackets. It's no good, but there's Kubai for the rebound. She had 15 of those in the win over Kennesaw State. And right now, Georgia Tech hasn't been able to capitalize and get any scores early in this game, but they've had opportunities, numerous shots at the basket. Big to big pass, Hermosa to Kubai. And after the Jackets missed their first five, Lorella Kubai puts Tech on the board. And that's what Georgia Tech has to do. They have to rely on their bigs, get points in the paint. Nice move by Destiny Wells. And she goes amongst the bigs and gets the rebound. Claws it out and gets a fresh shot clock as well. They're putting the 6-1 love on Destiny Wells. Slides off the screen from Bartley. And right now, Georgia Tech still in their man-to-man -man playing hard. Shot clock winding down. And you've got Jones trying to figure it out. Chin was straight but strong, but the rebound comes along to Jones. And now Wells pulls the trigger, hits the three, and she'll have a chance for a four-point play. Wow. <laughs> what a turn of events. Looking like Georgia Tech was going to capitalize and hopefully get the rebound from that possession. But Belmont has been hustling. And you see Destiny Wells with the wide open three. Call from behind with the foul. That's a no-no. You don't want to foul a jump shooter or someone shooting a three from behind. And now Wells is at the free throw line trying to convert the four-point play. Rims it out, but somebody stepped inside the paint early. And the lane violation called against Tech. 
We had several would-be offenders there. Yeah, it did look. I, I was, I'm surprised the referees were even able to make that call because it seemed like both sides jumped in pretty early. So another chance for Wells to complete the four-point play, and she does, and Belmont jumps out to the 8-2 lead over number 17, Georgia Tech. We saw two things on that last trip that Wells has struggled with through two games this year, connecting on threes, connecting on free throws. That is true. She has not started out the season shooting the basketball well from behind the arc. Only about 23% in two games, but she looked good on that first one and is able to get the and one and convert the four-point play. Belmont foul whistled against Conley Chin. Hermosa in deep, lost it against her hip, and it's ripped away from her by Bartley. And Armosa just has to take her time. She had good positioning, even though the help was coming. But she was about to turn into the help with that dribble, and Belmont was able to steal the basketball. Now defending Bartley in the post, blocks it, and she throws <laughs> it into the hands of Kubai. And that was great de defense by Armosa. Turns the ball over on one end, comes back, gets the block, and is able to get her team another possession. Kubai trailing, trying to fill the lane, but she can't finish. And the Jackets just one of seven to begin. Yeah, this is a slow start for Georgia Tech, but Belmont has done a great job of taking them out of their comfort zone and contesting the shots that they're taking in the paint. They're not allowing it to be easy for Tech to start this game. Wells off the back cuts. What a travel as she saw Armosa flashing at her. And that's what team defense is about. Great help defense by Armosa. You saw Love got beat on the head fake, and you had Wells cutting for the back door. She gets the pass, but because Armosa steps up, she causes that travel, and Wells has a turnover. See Nell Ford are giving some counsel on the sideline to Nerea Armosa. She subs her out for Digna Straubman, the grad transfer from Syracuse. Lawton into the rack, off the window and in. And isn't that great to see her going? So far to start the season, she's only averaging about 5.5 points a game, but it's been consistent with her assist play and dishing the ball as the point guard for this Georgia Tech ball club. But that's good to see Lightning going early. Yeah, Preseason All-ACC guard from Helsinki, Finland, off the lob on the pick and roll, and the finish by Tessa Miller. New Belmont sub, the freshman. Getting some early run. McQueen in transition lays it in. Now Belmont caught loafing, coming back, and Loyal McQueen, quick as a blink, takes advantage. <laughs> she is quick as a blink and gets back quickly on that fast break, able to lay it in with the left, the lefty with the finish. And her responsibility is growing this year after it was announced that Kira Fletcher would miss the season with a foot injury. Another backdoor feed in the flip in by Schoenwald. And that's just mis miscommunication. You see the opposite, what we saw the previous position or the pre previous possession was that Georgia Tech had help on that back door. Lawton just cut left hanging and open layup for Belmont. Lawton gets her pocket picked, trying to cross by Tootie Jones, but Tootie Jones, 10th in the nation last year in steals per game. She's got quick hands. And for Belmont, a quick start. Barley some early buckets, and the Bruins lead by six. Bruins out to an early lead over Georgia Tech, but Bruins have made a habit of that this season. On Thursday, they let Ole Miss 16-3 after one quarter, and in their opener, a 30-point opening 10 minutes versus Chattanooga. They've yet to trail in a game this year. So far. Yeah, no, they've started out uh, flowing well, and they understand how important the first quarter is, especially on the road. You want to get the, the tempo or get the control of the tempo of the game early. You know, you want to show your presence, and they're doing it thus far, really beating Georgia Tech at their own game right now, having eight points in the paint to start this game with Georgia Tech, all six of their points coming in the paint. Jones off the weave, hits well. She's got six early, give her nine. Man, she must have been in the gym working on that three-point shot when she saw how she started out the season. I think the first two games, three for 13 from the three. But she's been incredible to start this game out, really dominant, showing her presence and showing the type of leader she is as a sophomore for this Belmont team. Well, it's 21 in that road win over Ole Miss Thursday. The drive and dish, McQueen tries to answer with the three. That's long, but Love swoops in for the rebound and draws the reach in on Belmont. Tag that on Jones, her first. 
and nice setup. Lighting it a little late, and Wales is able to knock down a three right around the top of the key. And she's been working on that shot. Like I said, she hadn't started the season out well from behind the arc, but she's perfect to start this game today from behind the arc against Georgia Tech. Yeah, well, she shot close to 40% from deep last year. And we're out to winning OVC Freshman of the Year honors, Sarah Bates, three-point marksman for the Jackets, comes in for Lawton. The Queen having trouble inbounding, feeds Kubai. And right now you see this little two-man game between Bates and Kubai. Kubai smartly passes it back out to McQueen to set something up. She racks up the screen from Stratmana, slips, gets it free to Stratmana. Shot clock at four, three on the way, and good from Love. Man, that looked like it was about to be a turnover or a messy possession for Georgia Tech. But Stratmana is able to cl clean it up and give the nice pass to Love for the three-point shot. Wells' jumper well defended by Bates. Tech the other way. McQueen wants a three. Dubai there for the rebound, but they're going to call the foul. Looks like on Georgia Tech and Straubana. And you see McQueen on that previous possession slips. Strauman's able to get the basketball back and gets Love for the open three-point shot. Love knocks down the three. Big play from the sophomore to cut into Belmont's lead. 15-9 now. Wouldn't have known from that expression if Aaliyah Love made it or missed it. <laughs> Only four made threes last year for the now second-year player from Kansas City, Kansas. Belmont on top, 15-9. Yeah, Love's locked in. She has some big assignments this afternoon guarding these guards that are quick for Belmont. Kinney attacks on Love. Draws the bump, doesn't get the bucket. And that was a good job by Love moving her feet, using her body well to make that a difficult shot and does not get called for the foul. Stroutman got the seal underneath and draws the foul. Pretty lob from Kubai. That was a nice lob by Kubai. She has been work working on that and practicing that well and doing it well for the last few seasons for Georgia Tech. That two-man tandem between post players is something that is really key and critical for Georgia Tech's offense to do well because they get points in the paint because they usually are dominant with the size or have the size advantage. Call the foul on Kyla McGuff, the freshman, her first team third. Jackets missed their first five from the floor, down by six, and we have an illegal screen on Straumana, and that's a quick second on Digna Straumana. Yeah, Straumana, she got another foul. This is something that Coach Fortner did not want to see early in this game. They need her presence. They're uh, leading scorer coming off the bench to start the season, and she gets called for an easy one. You can't back into that screen. She was trying to be a little coy, but the ref calls it. Digna Straumana. Quite a strong impression in her Georgia Tech debut. 19 points, nine rebounds against Central Michigan earlier this week. Chin blanketed by Love. And right now, Georgia Tech really playing some tight man-on-man -man defense, making it difficult. That's a tough shot. And Georgia Tech's able to collect that rebound. Great defense, defensive possession for Georgia Tech. Cycle it around to McQueen. Yeah, Belmont's done a great job with this matchup zone as well. They're making it difficult for Georgia Tech to get passes into their post in the paint. That's a difficult pass. And fortunately, Kubai with the nice move, sped in the finish. Soft touch by Lorella Kubai, preseason all ACC, the senior from Tierney, Italy, inside of a minute, first quarter, 15 11 Bruins. Georgia Tech's making a nice run to finish out this first quarter, cutting Belmont's uh, lead to four. Scoring drought of two and a half minutes for the Bruins. Shot clock is at eight. Off the skip. The three-pointer by Chin doesn't fall, but the carom comes long to Kinney. And you got to know that if you're Georgia Tech. Long shots call for long rebounds. Kyla McGough gets swatted by Kubai. The freshman trying to challenge the ACC all-defensive senior, Lorella Kubai. And she might want to reconsider that decision. Yeah, she might want to reconsider. Lorella Kubai right there, following it up. Nice block, nobody, it was clean. And she's like, get that out of there, not in my house. <laughs> ACC co-defensive player of the year, defending in the post on Bartley. Jones, off a stagger. Off the roll and replaced the three from Chin, doesn't fall. It was set up well. 
But a foul called once again for a rebound, but this time it's going on Belmont. I was wondering where that one was going. I know Lorella Kubai was looking like, was the foul called on me? Uh, but that was great hustle by Georgia Tech on that possession. Belmont fighting, they're hustling. They're crashing the boards hard like they're intended to do against this Georgia Tech team, giving themselves second chance opportunities. Fortunately for Georgia Tech, Belmont has not been able to make some of those threes fall in the last couple of minutes. And Belmont's missed his last six from the floor. The foul was on Bartley. Shot clock is off. And this is key. Georgia Tech trying to see if they can close this quarter out with the score. The Queen snaking through with the left hand. It was the offhand, and she couldn't get it up. And the first quarter comes to an end with Belmont on top, 15 to 11. Whether the cold snap at the end of the quarter, but the Bruins through 10. And the Cambridge Pavilion team that reached the NCAA second round a year ago, showing they're up to the challenge in Atlanta. Belmont trying to put another power conference pelt on its wall. And thanks to nine points from Destiny Wells in the first quarter, they have a four-point lead. Wells, somebody, she can play in any conference in the country, Fallon. She can, and you know, she's a little small in stature at 5'6", but she doesn't play small in stature. She is a huge presence for this Belmont team. And she's just been great since she started. Since she was a freshman for the Bruins, has been so consistent in starting this season out, averaging about 21 points a game. She's almost at the halfway point in the first quarter and starting to get that three-point shot going, too. Average 17.8 points, close to five assists last year as a freshman. The turnaround by Kubai doesn't get it. We caught up with Barb Brooks yesterday, and I asked her, when did you first know that this was somebody you wanted to pursue on the recruiting trail? And Coach Brooks told us his first year as Belmont's head coach, and I'm using his words. These are, these are his words, not mine. He said, I saw this little munchkin on a side court at the convention center at some AAU tournament, and right on cue, there is Wells. She's got 11. But he told his staff, this is the kind of player I want on my team. Yeah, you see it. I mean, to be so young, she feels so comfortable in the starting point guard role, really a score for this team, but just comfortable in that one dribble jump shot right there. You can just see a flow and a maturity about her at such a young age. She has a great presence for this team. London turns the corner, dishes to Love, and the mid-range jumper falls for Aaliyah Love. And look at another sophomore, Aaliyah Love is just a, a fantastic player for Georgia Tech. Has a lot of potential and upside, can play multiple positions. Got Lorella Kubai with the steal, fighting on defense. Anticipating that post setup and drawing the foul on Belmont. You see the pump fake and the flyby and the finish by Destiny Wells, and then it's Love showing her touch on the other end. And that's what Georgia Tech needs. These, both teams are starting to get the flow going, getting into their offensive set, starting to figure out a little bit of what team, I mean, what each team is offering on the defensive end, and they are both starting to get into a rhythm. Love can't get that one down. Love four and a half points per game as a freshman last year, double digits, her first two games of the season. Rebound on the run to McQueen. Handed off at the pass by Jones. And you can see this. Belmont is a team, they're not going to try and get too much in the paint unless they're beating you on some backdoor cuts. They're looking to shoot jump shots while Georgia Tech still trying to feed the post, give Hermosa some love, but she was, you know, surrounded by about three Belmont players down there. They are doubling and doubling fast when Georgia Tech's trying to get the basketball in the post. Hermosa off the cut, and she forces it in. And that was a great hard cut by Armosa, getting to the basket, knowing she has the size advantage, but able to finish on that inbound pass. And she has been doing that at a high level this opening season. Nerea Armosa, 13 of 16 from the floor her first two games. And she's been incredible, shooting such a high percentage. And now yet another steal. Lawton in, <laughs> pursued by Wells, and she comes hard and fouls her. And that's what Georgia Tech's defense needs to do. They have to get in front of or get out here on these passing lanes. You see this right here on this handoff. Very sloppy, trying to get the basketball to Wells, and Lottnick just cuts it, gets the steal, and is able to drive for the layup, draws the foul. She's going to the line for two shots. Lodemar Lawton in second in the ACC and steals a year ago. 
Junior from Helsinki, Finland, 73% free throw shooter last year. Yeah, she's just a feisty player. She's going to hustle, has the or does the intangibles for this Georgia Tech team. And in a different role, but played a lot of point last year for this Georgia Tech ball club due to the injury to Kiera Fletcher. Kiera Fletcher out this season, but helping in that role to take some of the weight off of McQueen at the point position. Strokes them both, tied at 17. And it's now turned into an 11-2 Georgia Tech run. They were once down nine. McGuff kills her dribble. Beats Bartley. Goes to work on Hermosa with the left hand off the mark. Hermosa tears it down. And that was a nice move by Bartley. Was not afraid. Had Hermosa one-on-one and just missed the shot. Leah Love has the top to shoot that three, but decided to still work the basketball. Lawton has time, and she has the target. Probably and Georgia Tech takes its first lead. Yeah, probably was a good decision. Swing the basketball, see what you can get in your offense. Better look, better shot by Lawton on that three. Now ball hawking Wells, who pitches to Jones. See an extra level of defensive intensity out of the quarter break from the Jackets. They tag McQueen for the foul. And right there, you see McQueen, nice drive, nice kick. They work on that in practice, and Lightning is able to knock down that three-point shot. Great open look, good pass by McQueen. You had mentioned Lawton and cold from the field to begin the year. Only five for 23, one of nine from deep through two games. The answer on the other end by the Bruins. And you were right, she has it, but starting to get it going in this game, it was still early in this season. Like I said, she'll do the intangibles, the things that can help her team win. So far, they haven't needed her to score a lot of points, and she's hopefully starting to get a rid rhythm for Georgia Tech because they're going to need her this afternoon against this feisty Belmont team. She's got seven. She resets, poked out of her hands by Jones on the floor, and Nell Fordner calls time. London nearly had her pocket picked again by Jones. Nell Fordner wisely preserves possession for the Jackets. Her team has grinded back, an 11-0 run recently snapped, but Georgia Tech in front in the second. Loaded by Lawton in with seven points, pace and tack with a one-point lead here in the second quarter. Andrew Demetra, Fallon, Stokes, a one-point Fallon it was a 15-6 Belmont lead. What have the Jackets done to clamp down better on the Bruins defensively? Well, what they've been doing is pushing them off that three-point line. They've been forcing them to dribble the basketball and playing some solid one-on-one -on -one defense with help. Georgia Tech's very capable of switching. Their post players can guard guards, and I think it's just been this swarming defense of Georgia Tech that has really stopped in pushing Belmont off of the three-point line and limiting those outside shots. Jackets only had six on the shot clock out of the timeout. Had to trigger that quickly. Bates misfires. Back comes Wells and the Bruins. Destiny Wells, 13 of Belmont's 19 points. Beats Bartley, but she's blocked from behind by Love. And that was great help by Love. You saw the mismatch. Bartley was going against um, the smaller Bates for Georgia Tech. And Love comes in and swats the, gets the block from behind. Yeah, Mark Brooks told us yesterday, very weary of the size that the Jackets possess. Armosa used her size to get a clean look, but left it short. Right. You had mentioned, I mean, they played against an Ole Miss team that had some solid size, but this size of Georgia Tech is very mobile and athletic, and it's just a different monster you have to handle or go against. The shake, the shot, the three off the mark. Tapped out into the corner and raced down by Chin. And that's nice hustle by Chin, hustling. That's what Belmont is going to have to do to try and get second opportunities against this Georgia Tech team who rebounds the basketball extremely well. Only Chin led the Bruins in rebounds a year ago. Wings across court over the fingertips of Bates. The three doesn't fall by Jones. Armosa tears down the rebound. Nice swing pass. Jones could knock that one down, but a good rebound by Armosa. Able to still stay strong and handle that basketball so it didn't get stolen. Halfway through our second quarter. Lawton it, pounded, almost threw it away. Another jump ball, and the possession arrow favors Belmont. 
And that's what Lightning cannot do. As the point guard, when she has the basketball in her hands, she cannot get stuck or pick that dribble up. And it needs to be a little bit more movement. Georgia Tech was too stagnant on that last possession. Didn't really bail her out so she could pass to somebody else. Yeah, stagnant was exactly the right word for it. Belmont's win Thursday at Ole Miss, its second straight year with a win over an SEC team, also right at Auburn two seasons ago. They are looking for the swing pass at two-man game between Jones and Wells, former AAU teammates as well. Bates lines one up, can't knock it down. Lawton in backside, the rebound, and the kick to McQueen. Her three is online, but off the mark. Georgia Tech still struggling from behind the arc. Two open looks, two good looks. They just weren't able to capitalize. Jackets two of eight from three. Belmont two of seven. As Bates got a hand on the pass. Tessa Miller, freshman from Crossville, Tennessee, in for Belmont. Take a look at that. That was great knockout anticipation. By Bates. Good knockout. Great anticipation by Bates. That slip cut, Belmont likes to do backdoor cuts, slip screens, and right there, just a little too far over Chen's head. She couldn't control it. Turnover, the fifth of the half against Belmont. Georgia Tech trying to shake a cold snap itself. And neither one of these teams, ever since they came out of that timeout, same score, 20 to 19, trying to still figure it out. Lawton and Highwire in the baseline. In traffic, able to bounce it free to Kubai. Bates for three. Lawton and flying in, and the stick back no good, though. Man, she, she, that was a tough one. Wide open look. She hustles in for that rebound and just shoots it short. Doesn't get it high up that glass for the easy lay-in. She's coming in hot for that rebound, but almost too hot for the stick back. Right. Wells can't create over Lawton in. Georgia Tech finds some offense in transition. McQueen feeds Lawton in. And her three again doesn't fall. Georgia Tech has missed his last seven. But Belmont has missed his last five. And it's been an up and down game. Both of these teams early look a little bit winded. It's been back and forth, no scores for the last four minutes. A little over four minutes has been a scoring drop for Belmont. So this is an up and down game. Both teams trying to see if they can try and get the ball in the basket. Could be a five-second violation, and indeed, time runs out on Chin. I will say this, Fallon, there is no doubt with the intensity. Both these teams respect the other, having both won NCAA tournament games last year, and you can see it because neither team is given an inch. Right, and it feels like a tournament game. You know, these teams are very capable. Georgia Tech made it to the Sweet 16 a season ago. Belmont make it, made it to the second round, lost to Indiana. But it's competitive. Neither one of these teams wants to let each other, or they want to come out of here with the victory this afternoon. Belmont receiving votes as Elisabetta Bulana, the freshman from Latvia, comes in, and her Ooh. floater is good. Look at Bulan. That's a nice shot, nice runner. Good to see her back on the court. Had a knee bump that she had in the previous game against KSU, but she looks like she's not missing a beat. Continuing where she left off, hit two big threes in that KSU game. And Browning throws it away on the other end. And Mel Fortner calling upon Bulana for a scoring spark off the bench. And she said, Coach, I got you. Let me see. That's another look for Destiny Wells. Not expecting that, but a woo, nice runner for the freshman. Nice move. Off the left foot with the right hand. That's what I was about to say. That's a nice pro move right there. Sometimes freshmen, when they come off the bench, they can be a little deferential, but certainly not Bulana as Hermosa twists and scores. And Georgia Tech suddenly up by five. And that was a great job by Armosa, taking her time and then getting the score. Quick transition off the outlet. McQueen with the spin, with the flip. Armosa offensive rebound. Gets it away to Bates for three. Jackets again fighting for their offensive rebound. It comes to Wells. Hamden and is able to bounce away. Man, if Bates was able to knock down that three, that probably would have tore the roof off in here. Just the momentum shift of Georgia Tech trying to find something or get some type of rhythm going, but Belmont still playing solid defense, able to capitalize and get that rebound. And still Belmont only two points over the last eight minutes. Wells can't snap that. 
Nor can Browning on the follow. But they are hustling. They just cannot finish. And you know, when you're that close to the basket, getting that ball up high on the top of the uh, rim or trying to get it high up on that square is what can help you to get, knock down those buckets. But Georgia Tech has been there, continued to defend, even when Belmont has been able to hustle and get some offensive boards. And for as icy as that rim has been for Belmont, still only down five. Hermosa, shot clock at three, can't finesse that in. Man, and that was a nice, fortunate pass that Kubai was able to zip through to get it to Armosa, but she's not able to knock that baseline jump shot. Final seconds of the first half. Belmont's last field goal was at the 640 mark. Wells dancing with Bates. Reigns one down, almost banks it in. And the half comes to an end with Georgia Tech up by five. Destiny Wells accounting for 13 first half points for the Bruins with this veteran Georgia Tech team grinding back from a nine point hole. And they head to halftime of McCamish up by five. Defensive minded Sunday afternoon in Atlanta. And the number 17 team in the nation up by five. Well, I think the player that needs to really emerge for Belmont is they need to see a little bit more from Jones and I would say Bartley as well. Those have been two consistents so far in this season that they haven't really seen a lot of scoring from in this first half. And for Georgia Tech, I would definitely say that it needs to be another guard, either McQueen or Love, to get going give some additional points from the outside because right now we know Georgia Tech is going to pound the basketball in. We know their guards like to dri drive the basketball as well, but they need to get some outside shooting and scoring go going from those two sophomores. Well, Tech pounded inside in the opening possession, results in free throws for Love. Fouls Tootie Jones is second, and boy, it's been a tale of, I guess now two plus games at the foul line for Aaliyah Love had a career high 15 versus Central Michigan. She was five of six at the stripe in that game. It was one of six versus Kennesaw State. She splits her first two free throws tonight and gives Tech the six point lead. Yeah, she's gotten into a little bit of a funk, but hopefully she can get it going. Like you say, when it's close games and a game like as tightly played as this one has been played, free throws are gonna be very critical going down the stretch. Jones, soft jumper off the curl by Tootie Jones, the sophomore from Troy, Alabama. And just like we said, this is a capable player, averaged around nine points a game as a freshman. So far in this game, I mean, this season, averaging about 10. So she's consistent. She uh, provides scoring, also handling the basketball, a second point guard on the floor for Belmont. Bart Brooks called her a savage competitor, and she finds baskets and has already made a lot of big shots in her Belmont career. Kubai off the mark from the mid-range, and Jones clears the rebound. And she's so feisty. That was a great box out on Love. She pushed her out so she could get that rebound and was able to, to snag it. Three-pointer off the mark. Rattles free. Up for grabs. Love has it. And this is crazy. I know... Coach Brooks is like they not, have not been able to knock down some open three-point shots they normally get. It's been a bit of a struggle to get some threes knocked down in this game for both sides. Love overcooks the lob. Turnover for Tech. And, and look, we knew three-point shooting was going to be a struggle tonight, not because these teams aren't proficient in shooting the three, but because defensively right. they have locked the doors and thrown out the key when it comes to opponents shooting threes this year. We'll give you the numbers on that in a moment. Wells trying to get things loose from the outside. Offensive rebound, Barley. She's stuffed, surrounded by the Jackets. And take your pick, who gets credit for that block? <laughs> right. And that was a great rebound. She had three defenders from Georgia Tech on her. Bartley did, but nice defense by Love to get that block. And on the other end, Kubai makes it clinical. And that's all she needs to do. When she gets the ball deep in that paint, it's just turn, score, and that's exactly what she just did right there with the right hand hook. Kubai up to six points, six rebounds. Jones through a double team, splits and kicks to Wells. Man, what a pass by Jones. Unfortunately, Wells just couldn't knock it down. And you see the two-man game that Georgia Tech was trying to do. Love. A little too far behind the basket to finish that shot. Tech wins the 50-50 ball. Lead it by six. Kubai from deep. Rebound Belmont. 
Another good box out. Belmont being right there with the body. You just had Chen putting her body on Hermosa so her team could control that rebound. And Belmont's held its own on the boards. They have, and that's something we thought Georgia Tech was going to be able to capitalize on with their size, but Belmont has done a great job of boxing Tech out and being in the right position, just like that pass and that finish right there by Barton. Still have a chance for three the hard way as it's now 27-23 Tech. And this is a feisty game. Both of these teams really fighting, trying to see what they can get out of their offensive sets. Nice pass by Wells on the cut. Bartley right there grabs it and is able to complete, or trying to complete the three-point play. Bartley, the sophomore, will shoot her free throw. Georgia Tech calls timeout. We'll be back after this. Tech leads by four, seven minutes left in the third, and heading into this matchup panel, both Georgia Tech and Belmont had put razor wire around the three-point arc. Look at their three-point defense through their first two games of the season. Both teams struggling to find the touch from deep, perhaps no surprise. It's no surprise because they both defend the three extremely well. They're pretty much even today, two of 11 for both sides, but you have to applaud these teams, how they've been battling. The defense has been spectacular for this game, and both teams have just been very stingy on what they're allowing each other to, each other to do on the offensive end. You see it in so many tight games where teams are struggling from three. It's not necessarily how many you make, but when you make them. Right. And I feel like we might be sitting on a timely three at some point in this game as Nell Porter's team coughs it up in the half court. Yeah, they have to fall down eventually, especially as this game gets down to the wire. But this has been a close one, been very tight. Both teams really competing. Miller hands off to Jones. Attacks the rack on McQueen. And that's too easy. McQueen, I guess she was expecting help to come from that offside, but you cannot open up. Jones did a great job going to that baseline, driving hard to the basket, and was able to finish with the lay-in. Judy Jones, a coach's daughter. Her mom was her head coach in high school. Kubai in deep off the bottom of the backboard. Fast break for Belmont. Jones with the stop and pop. Could not tie up with the offensive rebound, Wells. Right now, Belmont really attacking Georgia Tech. Trying to find openings, seeing if they can score. And Jones being very aggressive. Another two points for Jones. And we are all knotted up. A 6-0 Belmont run. Jones was scoreless in the first half. She's got six here in the third. And I know Coach Brooks had to tell her at halftime she can't be that quiet. They know what she can do on the defensive end, but they need some of her scoring. Lawton in, in the stare down with Kinney. Swung to McQueen. Shot clock at six. Lawton in with a step back and a hand in her face. No good. Hermosa grabs the miss. And that was a tough shot. Georgia Tech very fortunate that they were able to corral that offensive rebound but very stagnant in their offense. And Lawton gets the roll with the left. And sometimes you just have to wheel that basketball in, and that's exactly what Lawton did on that last possession, able to get the finish and make something happen for her team. Team high nine for Lodemeyer. Lawton and Jackets back in front, inside of five minutes in the third. A rainmaker is short from Kinney. And that was good defense, a nice closeout by McQueen. She was right there, alters that shot. Foul off the ball against Belmont. Let's see who they charge that on. But Georgia Tech back in front. Thanks to the nifty finish from Lawton at 29-27 Tech. ACC Coach of the Year, Nell Fordner, hard at work in the huddle with her team up two. And if she gazes across the court, Fallon, she'll see some familiar faces, though not exactly a welcome sight. <laughs> Back when Nell was head coach of Auburn in 2009, Tigers only suffered two regular season losses. But that woman there, the former Jessica Mooney, Belmont assistant, was responsible for one of them when she played at Vanderbilt. 12 points, 
a regular season upset. Mel Fortner and the Tigers. Coach Fortner has so many connections around women's basketball. She's been working in, in this uh, realm for so long, so you know she's gonna cross paths with a lot of former players, players she's coached against and things of that nature. They got the lay-in by Hermosa. Four-point tech lead. Off the screen, catch and shoot, Chin. Run out, rebound to Lawton. Tex Biggs running the floor, threading the needle to Kubai for the lay-in. And that's what Georgia Tech needs to do. They need to push the basketball, control that tempo. They know they have Biggs that will run the floor. This is a running gun team, and Georgia Tech can do it extremely well when they put their minds to it. And a 6-0 Georgia Tech run to match the Belmont 6-0 spurt, and the pass thrown away by Bartley. And you see that was the miscommunication on with, between Bartley and Wells. Bartley hits Wells on the back like, my bad, but Georgia Tech is starting to increase their defensive intensity a bit on that last possession, causing another turn turnover for Belmont. Bulata for three. Hermosa over the top of the board. Georgia Tech gets another opportunity. Belmont still playing very tight defense. Extra pass, Lawton in three in the corner is long. Georgia Tech is two of 13 from three in this ball game. Yeah, they cannot get the three ball to fall for them this afternoon. Neither team can, but that was a great defensive possession from Belmont. Wells straight, Woo! and she gets the bounce. <laughs> Sometimes wow. you just get that lucky bounce. That's something Belmont, they needed to see a three-point shot fall. Who better to do it than Wells herself? And let's see if that can get her team going. She's got all three of Belmont's triples tonight. Boy, you rarely see that kind of bounce where it goes off the back heel, off the backboard, and then in. And a foul on the layup attempt by Kubai. And I think that's worth another look. That was a nice shot. Got her rhythm. Gets a lucky bounce, and it just falls for her. Nice slip right there by yeah. Miller to cause a bit of a distraction. But good shot by Wells. Now, some people would call that a lucky bounce. I call that a shooter's bounce. Shooter's bounce. Yeah, because we know Destiny Wells can do that. She can shoot and score it with the best of them. She had 25 points, seven assists, no turnovers in that upset of five seed Gonzaga in the NCAA tournament. Meanwhile, Kubai up to nine points, nine rebounds. Five points from 1,000 for her career as she rattles home the second. Balance should be, she could become just the second Georgia Tech player ever with 1,000 career points. 1,000 career rebounds. She's 58 boards away from 1,000 as well. Yes, that's that's very impressive. To be the second player to do that in Georgia Tech's history, what an accomplishment. Wells lost the handle on the Euro step. Stroutman passes on the three. She does. Stroutman, she needs to look. She has to look to shoot that shot. She When she's open, I'm sure Coach Fortner wants her to take those shots. She doesn't want to miss on those opportunities. She won't pass that up, <laughs> rattles it down. And the knockdown from Strauman. What a big time shot from her, the transfer from Syracuse. She is very capable and a big reason that Coach Fortner is happy she was able to get her a snagger for this Georgia Tech ball club. It prompts a Belmont timeout as Digna Strauman, a handcuff by fouls in the first half, opens up an eight point lead for Tech here in the third. Well, one area where Nell Fortner wanted to fortify her team this year was more depth and more scoring off the bench. Digna Straubina, whom Nell Fortner had a lot of looks at when she played at Syracuse, had 120 career starts at SU. Later, additional COVID year with the Yellow Jackets coming off the bench and a timely three to put the Jackets ahead by eight. Well, the player they call Diggy on the team, I mean, she's really stepped up. We talked about the struggles that Georgia Tech has had, knocking down threes in this game, and that was a big one she was just able to knock down to increase Georgia Tech's lead to eight. Hardly exchanged with McGuff, driving in, roping it out. Jones, a contested three, but it's pure. I'm telling you, Jones is really heating up in this third quarter, starting to feel it, and that was a big-time three to counter the three that Strawman was all was just hit on the previous possession for Georgia Tech. And Tootie Jones, nine third quarter points. Kubai walked. Trying to wriggle her way through. 
Yeah, she tried to take an extra step, too many steps, and trying to make that post move with that spin and turn. But unfortunately, Georgia Tech gets another, another turnover. But fortunate for Belmont, they get another opportunity. So we've seen dueling threes by a Diggy and a Tootie. <laughs> Diggy and a Tootie. To come up on one minute in the third. Jones with Bulana on her. Throws it up, can't get the bounce. Man, that kid Jones, she is not afraid. Really feisty, being very aggressive, driving to the basket. Bulana high wires the baseline, and looks like we will have a foul, yes, on Belmont. But Bulana comes in, and she's like, let me show you what I can do. I can do it too, and makes a nice penetration drive to the basket, draws the foul, and Georgia Tech is gonna take it out of bounds on the baseline, see if they can get something going on an out of bounds play. Bulana unloads to Armosa. One minute, third quarter. A five point Georgia Tech lead at halftime. Armosa surveys the skip to Lawton. Can't unhinge herself from Kinney, and Kinney draws the offensive on Lawton. Terrific defense, keeping the feet nimble in front of the preseason All-ACC guard. Yeah, that was a great job by Kenny. Forcing Lawton in, she was playing her so tight, good, solid defense, and Lawton in gets that arm extended and gets called for the foul with the push-off. But that just tells you, both teams have been playing strong defense against each other, been very stingy. Nothing's come easy for any of these players, and they're really having to work for every point or basket they're able to get. Wells shaking, shooting, rims no. Five second differential, shot clock to game clock. Bulana will gear it down. And Wells, she's just fantastic for her size, but able to create space where she's able to shoot over taller guards and get some opening to see the basket. She's OVC tournament MVP. There were only two freshmen last year who won their conference tournament's MVP award. Destiny Wells is one, Paige Beckers of UConn the other. <laughs> That's some great company to be alongside. Dubai with the shot clock winding down, can't get the stick back. Four seconds to go in the quarter. Here is Wells with the heave from half court. Got to the backboard, but not in. And we end the third quarter the same way we ended the second with Georgia Tech protecting a five-point lead. Competitive one on this Sunday afternoon in Atlanta between two NCAA tournament teams. But it's the Jackets who head into the fourth with the lead. Stay with us. Georgia Tech leads by five as we head to the fourth, but Belmont staying in range thanks to shot making in that third quarter from Tootie Jones. Yeah, Tootie Jones, she has been aggressive. I know Coach Brooks had to tell her something at halftime because she's starting to get it going in that third quarter. And she is a big reason that Belmont is only down five in this fourth quarter. She was really, really great in that third quarter. Yeah, scoreless in the first half. Coming to life in the second. Belmont possession to begin the second, uh, the final quarter. Wells. Flipping over Kubai. Kubai making a wide target down there. The stick back can't fall for Bartley. And that's a tough one. That's one that Bartley wished she could get back. That's one that she has to knock down. Was so aggressive going in, getting that offensive board after the miss by Wells, but just couldn't finish. Georgia Tech going with his European Union lineup. All five internationals <laughs> on the floor as Kubai muscles it in. Wow, it looked like Kubai was about to break her back, extended backwards to get that basketball over the rim. Nice finish by the senior. And a foul on the take to the rim. You can say Destiny Wells was doing the same thing on that play. Drove really hard, but Lorella Kubai knew she had the mismatch, gets past Bartley with the lay-in. Nice move by the senior. That was well defended by Bartley. That was, that was. She played her as well as she could, trying to extend and push her out of bounds. But Kubai was able to find a small opening and was able to finish with the layup. Wells working on 16 points. Wells also set an OVC championship game record, 32 points to claim the crown for the Bruins versus UT Martin, and she did that as a freshman. And that's pretty amazing. That's the team they compete with pretty much every year for the OVC championship, and 
she just had a dominant freshman season. She doesn't play like a freshman. She's not even playing like a sophomore. Oh, she's yeah. playing like she's a senior and has been doing it for quite some time now. This Belmont team just reached the NCAA tournament five times in the last six seasons. Stays a five-point leader. Mosa dribbles it off her foot. And that was a good job, great anticipation. Destiny Wells was there, probably kind of threw Armosa off a bit, and she dribbled that basketball off her foot. Lawson in defends Wells. Kinney sizes up the tallest Stroutmana. Right now, Georgia Tech still playing this swarming defense. Man up, capable of switching. You got Luella Kubai on Wells. She takes it to the rim on her, but Kubai swats it. The put back with the shot clock expiring doesn't draw a rim from Jones. <laughs> and you're seeing why Lorella Kubai found it is such a defensive menace. Right, what an asset to have. Gets caught up on the switch one-on-one -on -one with Destiny Wells very quick. And she's like, not in my house, blocks that basketball, get it out of here. I don't know if you can even say that she was caught up because they, they switched ball screens because of the, the agility of Lorella Kubai at that five spot. How about that finish by Lawton? They do. And it seems like the two seniors are getting it going. On one end defensively, um, Lorella Kubai with the block shot, and then you have Lawton on the other end with a nice finish. Lawton with 11 as the three rattles home from Jones. Jones is like, she's not going to let this come easy. She is still locked in. She is trying to get Belmont or help Belmont get their third consecutive road win to start the season. Lawton with a step back baseline long. Yeah, that was a tough shot. Lawton shot that one a little too hard. Wells will pull it out. Seven and a half to go. Tech by four. 18 points for Wells. Launches from three. Off the mark. The rebound, Kubai. A 29th career double-double for Lorella Kubai tonight. 12 points, 11 rebounds. She's too shy of 1,000 points for her career. Dishes to Straumana for the three. That's no good. Man, and now these teams are up and down running. Last couple of, couple of possessions, neither team able to capitalize or score. I think both teams want to push the tempo because it's been such a grind to score in the half court. It is, and you want to get the ball down, see if you can make something happen, just like Bartley does with that nice pass and lay in. Only and, down two. And a two-point game off the finish from Bartley. And you're starting to see this Belmont side. The team really getting after cheering for their ball club to see if they can keep something going. They have some great fan support in the in McCamish this afternoon. Bulana, quick fire, and it's good from three. Oh, wow. the freshman showing no nerves. No nerves. The freshman, we talked about so many underclassmen in this game. And they're not playing like underclassmen. You got Boulan right there and able to go, go gets caught up on that screen. Bartley gets called. Nice shot by Boulan in the corner. Gets it. Bates cheering on her teammates. Or her teammate knowing that she would be in that role too. Both great three-point shooters. And Boulan is just showing what she can do and what she can add to this Georgia Tech arsenal. Meanwhile, the Belmont offensive foul on Bartley gives possession back to Tech. A five-point Yellow Jacket lead as we close on six minutes. Bulan weaving through traffic. The lob over the top was deflected away. That was Conley Chin, the senior. First team all OVC a year ago, anticipating the pass. And here's a three by Bartley. And that's something Bartley is capable of doing. She can knock down the three-point shot. She's a stretch forward, can play in and out, just wasn't able to knock that one down. Stramana lost the handle. Man, these teams are getting after it. You're not going to get anything easy. If you're going in that paint, you better drive hard to score or get fouled. Teams duking it out. I don't know why they're so well regarded in the preseason. They are. Both teams very well coached. You see they're both following the game plan, and that's why it's just been a tough game. Oh, Kenny with the sidestep on Bulana. <laughs> Kitty, what a big time shot by Kenny. The senior with a big time three pointer. And a timeout for Nell Fordner. I think she sees her team a little gassed and didn't want to wait until the next whistle. Jamie Lynn Kenny, the senior from Van Buren, Arkansas. She had seven triples in the game last year. 
And that three-pointer splashing down to make it a two-point game. 5.09 to go in our fourth quarter from McCamish. And to the Metro family Stokes, we've got a battle on our hands of McCamish. 5.09 remaining, Georgia Tech nursing a two-point lead over Belmont. Bruins fresh off a win on the road at Ole Miss. And a win last year in the NCAA tournament over five-seed Gonzaga. And refusing to go down quietly against the Yellow Jackets. Both teams look to run their records to 3-0. and Georgia Tech possession out of the timeout. Right, and what a better start, Belmont having three tough road games to start the season. What more can prepare you for conference play of the tournament? Big time shot by Boulan. The leaping leader by Elizabetta Boulana. There's some craftiness to her game. It's very crafty. She's not afraid to go in there. A nice runner as a freshman. You don't see too many freshmen with uh, the capabilities of knocking down that shot. Trying to ball hawk Kenny. Tucks it in deep to Bartley. Dubai defending her. Boulana got a hand on the kick out. Turns on the Jets. On the run to Lawtonen. Lawtonen with the left, no good. Dubai the rebound, though. Back to Lawtonen. And off the glass for the finish. How big has Boulana been in this game? The freshman stepping up with some big plays previously with the runner and then gets a big steal for Georgia Tech to capitalize. And Lawtonen able to regain the basketball and knock down the bank shot. Six-point tech lead, Bartley rolling to the rim. She draws the foul on Kubai. Man, Bartley is so crafty. She's deceivingly quick, has a nice first step where she gets, where she gets back past post players with that move and is able to draw the foul and is going to the free throw line for two shots. It's the first on Kubai, tech second of the quarter. And here is Madison Bartley, the 6'3 sophomore, Kettering, Ohio. She was high school teammates with Maddie Westfeld of Notre Dame, oh, the wow. reigning ACC Rookie of the Year. And she's a great player for Notre Dame. Bartley with seven points tonight, five rebounds. She's a 69% foul shooter a year ago. And she makes it a four-point game. And those are the shots you have to knock down in a close game like this. Great job by Bartley to step up. Ulana takes it across. They move low to my Lawton into the off guard. Let's see if this two-man game, Lawton is trying to make something work with Kubai. Kubai with great post position. Off the glass, doesn't fall. Rebound up for grabs the love, and she gets it up to the rim with a foul. And that's the type of hustle Georgia Tech needs and how they have to play in this game. Love right there following, right behind Kubai, knowing she was about to make a move, gets the offside rebound and is able to draw the foul going to the free throw line for two shots. And you saw Tootie Jones playing in the middle of that matchup, trail after Kubai, which vacated the spot where Love was able to come in and get the offensive rebound. Yes, and that was a great read by Love. You have to attack when your teammate's about to shoot. You got to crash. And Love connects on a bull. He says she had been struggling a bit from the free throw line. Knocks down two important free throws for Georgia Tech to extend their lead. Love has 18 to lead all scores. Gets the shake. Tries for a pass across and gets it batted. And Bulana gets bumped from behind. And that's a different look. Bulana is definitely pushing the basketball, giving Georgia Tech some flow. Belmont with another turnover on the previous possession, but Georgia Tech really trying to push the tempo and see if they can score in transition rather than their half-court sets. Meanwhile, that's the fourth foul on Tootie Jones, who's been such a spark offensively for the Bruins after halftime. They can't lose Jones. She's too important in this fourth quarter. Georgia Tech rescues the inbound. Three and a half minutes left. Lawton trying to shake on Kinney. Got away with a push off. Kubai instead all the way to the glass. And a foul called. 
One of those pleas from the Belmont bench go unheard there. It looks like they may have had a case because Lawton was called for a similar push off in the first half. Right, and she was not, that wasn't a good decision. She had two Belmont players that were following her to that baseline and she was really trying to make something happen. But fortunately, she doesn't get called for the push off for Georgia Tech and is able to get the basketball back out to Kubai who draws the foul. Kubai stuck at 12 points. 998 for her career. And back-to-back -back double doubles for the senior from Tyranny, Italy. She's pulled down 13 boards. Gets the second. Tech by seven. That was a big free throw for Kubai. They needed to at least get one. And she's able to split at the charity stripe. Bartley holds on Kubai. A lot of nice to hand in on Kinney. And right now, this Georgia Tech defense is very feisty, really putting a lot of pressure on the guards, making it difficult for them to get the ball inside. Shot clock at three. Jones has to create, trying to drop it down the shoot, but it was stolen by Lawton. What anticipation the nice drop down by Lawton to get that steal. She knew where the basketball was, comp was going, and she was able to get there and meet that pass for the steal. And now Lawton is tied up. And you can see this has been an exhausting game for these guards. They have really had to fight Lawton and having to have ball responsibilities for the majority of the game. And you can see she's a, she's a little winded because she's playing hard and it's hard to get past these Belmont defenders. Lawton to key it in. Tosses out to Kubai. Two and a half to go for McCamish. Very close game. These last few possessions are going to be tremendously important. Lana off the mark on the runner. Belmont triggers the transition. Jones. And she had Chin, and she saw her on the skip pass for a three. Instead, it's Kinney. And a foul called. As it looks like Bulana had a hand on her hip. She did. That Belmont had the skip pass, but decided to get back in their half court sets to see if they can make something happen. Kenny has the basketball and penetrates and is able to draw the foul. Now the third of the quarter against Tech. Kulana's first. Jones fires off the top of the backboard. And that's the a rare misses shot. In the yeah. second half from Tootie Jones. And Jones not happy with herself, knowing that she didn't like how that shot was probably released when she shot it. Misses badly, but still feisty on defense, making Lightning work for it. Give and go, Lawton all the way through, and Tech has its largest lead. How pretty was that between the two seniors in Lorella Kubai and Lodomai Lawton? Kubai, a great passer as a post, is able to get those types of assists and a nice finish by Lawton. That was just give and go poetry between the veterans. Bartley whips it out. A three on the way by Chin, doesn't fall. Big time rebound by Love right there. Georgia Tech seemingly having the momentum as we get this clock down to a minute. You wonder, Fallon, if that was Belmont's last best shot from Conley Chin as we take another look at Kubai threading the needle to Lawton. What a pass. What a cut by Lawton. She's able to beat Jones and miscommunication in Belmont's or beat Belmont's defensive pressure. No one rotates on that backside to try and help Jones. And Lawton is able to finish with that layup. That was a nice, crafty move. Lodemai Lawton to shoot two free throws now. And very sluggish start to the season. The fourth year junior from Helsinki, Finland, has 16 points, seven rebounds, seven assists. Man, and she can fill up a stat sheet. You know, that stat line is pretty impressive, even though she's had her struggle shooting to start the season, still consistent in so many other ways as a point guard for this team and defensively as well. ACC most improved player last year as they call love for the foul. And Belmont still fighting right now down 11, but it's still a lot of time in this game. This team's very capable, even though they hadn't shot the basketball well from behind the arc. They're capable of knocking some quick shots down. That's the operative word, quick. Jones on the jump stop. Can't get that over Kubai. And a loose ball foul on Belmont. Or Georgia Tech ball, it will be Georgia Tech ball. And that's just Bartley really fighting. 
trying to see if she can make something happen, gets called for the foul. But now Belmont's gonna get some full court pressure going to see if they can get a quick steal and get a quick score. Now Fordner was a little outside the coach's box. <laughs> Eric Bruden saying, coach, if you don't mind. <laughs> we know that coaching hash mark can be a suggestion sometimes. <laughs> It's a tight game. Both of these coaches really coaching these teams hard, trying to get a win. Bulana being hounded in the forecourt. Foul called on Kenny. How about these minutes in crunch time from Elisabetta Bulana, the freshman from Adansi, Latvia. Really modest minutes. Certainly nothing you would consider high leverage minutes through the first two games. And you know why she's instilled so much confidence and her head coach. Right, and, and you know, when you have opportunities, you have to take advantage. This season, Georgia Tech's gonna be without Kiara Fletcher due to injury, unfortunately, but when you have a freshman that can step up, she's gonna get minutes and has an opportunity. In this game, she's really showing what she's capable of doing and how she can help this Georgia Tech ball club. Well, that did not pan out in the way Georgia Tech wanted. Empty free throw trip by Bulana, and Belmont calls timeout. 51 seconds left. It was a five-point game going into the fourth quarter. But now Fortner's team has fired off a 7-0 run over the last 255, and they've held this efficient Belmont team Fallon to 30% for the game. That's impressive. Both of these teams can play great defense, but we know Georgia Tech's very capable, and they have shut down Belmont, especially from behind the arc. They knew that if Belmont was going to come in and beat them, it was because they were going to be raining threes. And they have limited those opportunities, really pushing and forcing Belmont outside of their comfort zone, having to shoot some two-pointers or going into the paint to try and get buckets. And, and Georgia Tech just has had a very impressive showing this afternoon defensively. They'd only been allowing 29% from the floor in the first two games. With the timeout, Belmont able to advance into the forecourt. And you see Lodemont launching it. The Jackets leading score tonight with 17. She mirrors the inbounder, Kinney. The bounce comes into Wells. Not a lot of time to spare here for Belmont. They need to get something off quick. And this is not cutting it. Uh, this is definitely not quick. Under their motion offense now, Jones puts it on the deck, takes it to the rack on Stroudmana, and she draws the foul. It does put Belmont in the bonus, but that was 18 seconds elapsed on that possession with the Bruins down 11. And that's what they should have done sooner. You see they, that Jones is able to draw a foul and is going to the free throw line, but you can't wait sitting at the top of the key, passing it back and forth, trying to decide who's going to take the initiative to drive the basketball. And finally, Jones is like, I'm going to do it. She draws the foul, but allows 18 seconds to run off the clock. Jones with 12 points in the second half. The foul was on Stroutman on her third. As one free throw does not get the bounce. And we called it free throws are so critical down the line in these close games. And that was a big miss, two big misses for Belmont. And a foul on the defensive rebound from Kubai. A 14th board for Kubai. And Kubai will have two cracks at the free throw line to get career point number 1,000 as she toes the nail with 9.99. 9.99 seems like some great catch three numbers this afternoon, but that's a a big accomplishment to a for a great player, one point shy. And the newest member of the 1,000 point club at Georgia Tech, the native of Tierney, Italy, Lorella Kubai. A thousand points, and before the season's over, she's definitely going to crack that thousand re rebounds mark. I know it's not the most climactic way to become a 1,000 point score, but Lorella Kubai would tell you, as well as anyone, those free throws down the stretch could be the rally repellent as she stretches the tech lead to 13 with Belmont calling timeout. And, and that's just a huge accomplishment right now, just keeping up with the trend this afternoon. Last game, she had 12 points, 15 rebounds. This afternoon, she's been solid again with 15 points and 14 rebounds. Just being announced over the public address in the Camus Pavilion, Lorella Kubai's accomplishment. Also has 14 rebounds. She led the ACC in double-doubles last year, was 16th nationally, a second straight double-double. See her accomplishments spanning her four-plus seasons on the flats. 
Yeah, she's been incredible. And, you know, her offensive game has been something that she's had to work on. And she's worked extremely hard over the last few seasons. Always been a capable defender, very versatile player for this Georgia Tech ball club. But what a huge accomplishment for any member when you're able to score 1,000 points. It's not many that can make and, that accomplishment. And oh, by the way, she was co-defensive player of the year in the ACC. Yeah, you can't mess with that. One of the best we've seen, one of the best that we have or they have in the conference. And Georgia Tech does not need to shoot another one. Shot clock is off. Well, Belmont came in and they battled. No doubt they will be a team to be reckoned with in March in the Ohio Valley Conference, but they'll wind up on the short end tonight. Georgia Tech clamps down in the second half. And this, and this one game. may resonate on the resume for Nell Fordner and the Yellow Jackets with their own aspirations toward March. Our final score this afternoon from McCamus Pavilion, Georgia Tech 58, Belmont 45. The Jackets closed the game, looking to close it out on a 9-0 run. Yeah, they definitely did close this game out on that 9-0 run, and they did what they needed to do towards the end of this game to capitalize and get a win. Great senior leadership in Lorella Kubai stepping up as well as Lota My Lawton to close this game out for the Jackets. And you have to tip your hat off to the performance they had to close out the fourth quarter and the performance that Belmont had. They're going to be a team that a lot of teams are going to have to reckon with, especially in their conference, and they're going to be competitive. And the talent on both sides pretty abundant this Sunday afternoon. But only one was going to walk out of the game as the winner, and it's the home team. Our final score, Georgia Tech 58, Belmont 45. As the Jackets improved to 3-0 on the year, Belmont suffers its first loss. The Bruins head back to Nashville at a record of 2-1. For Fallon Stokes and our entire ACC Network crew, Andy Demetra saying so long from Atlanta, number 17, Georgia Tech. A 58-45 winner over Belmont today. Watch it all on ACC Network.